Good evening. Thank you for joining us on Overcome by Love. You are watching on Vision TV. I am so blessed and so honored to have some special, beautiful women of God with me. And we are going to share so many different things from, um, I think, singleness to marriage and divorce and love and uh, struggles and emotions and whatever the Holy Spirit leads us to, you know, talk about tonight, we are going to talk about, and it's going to be amazing. So tonight I have Prophetess Rachel. <laughs> That's a tonight. new title. I'll take it. Yeah, Amen. <laughs> what do you mean? You are. That, you know what? Amen. We have to say yes. who you are, and Amen. you have to know the reason why you are who you are. Amen. Right? Yes. yes. Because you carry it. Amen. You know, and I want to encourage all of you, you know, if the Holy Spirit has told you something about who you are, and you will have a prophet who will come back to you and confirm who you are. So she is a prophetess, and she's going to walk in authority, Amen. and she's going to speak it out, and things shall happen. Amen. They've already been happening. Yes. Right? Yes. So, amen. And then we have Sister Jessica. This is actually Veronica. Oh, Veronica. I'm so sorry. Veronica. <laughs> Jess no Jessica's in the audience right Woo! now. <laughs> <laughs> so, glory to God. But, um, you know, I'm just so happy and blessed that you guys are here tonight. You women of God are here. Not guys. Women of God. So, would you like to open up in prayer? Sure. Oh, sure. Amen. 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 Okay, Father God, I just thank you, Lord, for this day, Lord yes, God. Lord. I thank you, Lord, for this a beautiful Hallelujah. set, Lord God, for yes. this opportunity, Lord God. And I pray for every person in this audience that is watching, Lord God, that you would be, my God, present there yes, with them, my Lord. God. We pray for a new revelation yes, to come, Lord. my God. Yes. I pray that your spirit, my God, would fill mm -hmm. their hearts, Lord God. And today things will be broken. Today yes, things will be Lord. made clear. Today, Hallelujah. things will be made new, Lord God. Yes. Father, that you would be a part of every part of this conversation, every yes, word, Father. every thought, Lord God. For it is for such a time as this that yes. we are here, Lord God. Hallelujah. Divine appointments, Lord yes, God. And we Father. thank you. So have your way here, Lord. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So as you were praying, I had a vision right now. Oh, my gosh. So, you know, I, I saw the Lord's hand. And his hand was like this. But his hand was so big. I mean, like really, really big. And he said, my daughters, my sons, put all your cares, all of your worries, everything that you are struggling with right now, put it in my hands. And I, I will help you. I will provide for you. I will do everything that you need me to do. Because he is our Jehovah Jireh. He is our provider, right? And so... You know, we just give God the glory for that. You know, I don't know if that was for someone out there tonight that needed to hear that. But, um, you know, I always just like to, um, you know, praise God and give God glory because, you know, I am not who I used to be, Amen. right? The old has passed away, and we are all new creations in Christ, as that scripture says in 2 Corinthians 5.17, which I love. I remember before I, I was coming back to the Lord, I was having this birthday party, and and I was having, um, you know, a bunch of alcohol, of course, and, you know, drinks and everything. And, you know, we're going to be dancing until the morning time. And anyway, I, I kept on saying, out with the old, in with the new. And I didn't even know, like, that I was even saying that because, like, in January, when January came, it was my birthday, it was in December. When January came around, there was something urging me, like, I need to go to church. I need to go to church. And when I finally went to church at my sister's church, the first scripture that the pastor wrote, read was 2 Corinthians 5, 17, out with the old and in with the new. And I was like, oh, my gosh. I was just like, you know, flabbergasted because I was just saying that, you know. And little did I know that the Holy Spirit was already starting to move within me. You know, like I just felt like I needed to get in church. I just felt like, you know, like all that stuff, all the alcohol, you know, all the partying, it, it, it wasn't for me anymore. Mm -hmm. Like I was like something just happened it was like he just elevated me and said you don't need that you need me you know and when you come to a point in your life when you're like okay lord i need you i don't need the alcohol i don't need the men i don't need the party in life i don't even need like even some like women friends because you know the thing is is that are they pulling you down or are they lifting you up you know and i know as women of god you know, we are here to lift each other up. You know, when one falls down, 
we get on that phone and we say, hey, sister, you need to pray for me. You know, no matter what the situation is, you know, that's, that's what we do. You know, and so I want to encourage all of you out there that are watching this tonight that we are here for you. I invite you to come down to Vision TV, 15361 Brookhurst Street in Westminster. I want you to call us, even the phone lines here, and I'll get the number here, 714-299-5026 or 714-299-7352. So it's, it's important that, that we let you know that we are here because we want to pray for you. We want you to get that breakthrough. You know, we want you to get anointed. You know, we, we want to bless you. You know, if you need family restoration, we're here. You know, and I encourage you to come down now because we are here. So, you know, really from any time from 6 o'clock until 10 o'clock at night, you know, we are always here from Monday through Saturday. And, you know, we are here just to bless you. So tonight, you know, I was just, we were just kind of talking a little bit about, you know, like what are we going to talk about? But, you know, I just felt like in my spirit right now that I, I wanted to discuss maybe a little bit about emotions, you know, as as you were saying, like, they can either work against you or they can work, you know, for you. And, and if you want to share how God has raised you up in that, because I think women need to hear, like, yes, we are emotional. We, we, are, we, are, we are very emotional. And, and God made us a, for, for that reason because of, of being, um, um, having compassion. You know, he wants us to have compassion. Um, meaning that, like, if you're if a child falls down, who normally runs to get the child? It's the mother, right? Because the father say, "Oh, get up, get up, get up!" But the mothers, we're like, "Oh, my baby just fell down," and so we're there to pick them up. And and as women, you know, if one of us get hurt, we're there for them, you know. And God made us to be that for a special reason. So I just want to encourage all of you to sit, relax. Enjoy what God is speaking to you about, okay? Yeah, I think that um, it's interesting to, to think about that the diff- one of the bigger differences, one of the things that came up to me in my development and understanding that, yes, I'm crazy emotional. And honestly, there's certain times of the month that I'm more emotional oh, than course. others. <laughs> and it's just, it rages inside of me. I'll cry at a commercial. Aww. I remember seeing like one of my friends who was pregnant and she was just a mess emotionally. But like I was like, "Oh my god, when I have a baby, I'm going to be a mess. <laughs> I'm going to tear down walls and cry and be angry for no reason." Oh, no. I thought that, you know, and I realized that um one of the hard the things that had to like make me grow up yes. was realizing our interactions and our expectations of men. Because sometimes what we do is we have the same expectation from men to respond to us the way that we respond to one another. That's right. Because we feel things differently, but God created us differently. That's right. And one of the things I talk about at our beauty brunch, um, which is one of, part of the ministry that we do, is that um, we, like, we believe that it's not that we are women so we are second-class citizens no. in the body of Christ. No, no, He says in the end times that... He pour out, they would pour out the, his spirit on all flesh. That's right. Men and women. That's and right. so when people were telling me or making me feel like preaching wasn't for me, but God was putting ministry inside of me, then I was like, how, I, I, does it doesn't make sense. And yeah. he's giving me this vision. He's giving me these words. And so when I had to start to like say, okay, wait, I, am st- I had to stop apologizing for who I was. Mm. I had to stop apologizing for feeling so hard. I had to stop apologizing for being too much of anything. Amen. Because the Lord said, I made you this way, but if you don't learn how to manage it, your emotions will run you. Mm. And so I had to say, okay, if I can stop saying sorry for it, yes. then I can start saying, okay, I don't have to apologize. God made me this way. How do I use it? Yes. And, you know, the Lord started to teach me that little by little by giving myself boundaries yes. on how. Yes, and amen. saying, and I think the first step of that is accepting it. Like you aren't too much. God yes. made you the way He made amen. you for a reason. And there's some of us who cry at commercials. Yes. And you know, and I was think I think one time you even mentioned like 
how the Lord will even use that emotional surge during that time of the month or the, the before that time of the month for his, for him. Yes. I mean, it's not like he, that, the, the, our, our, our cycle is not to be yeah. too crazy, yeah. but that's part of our existence. It's that's not a part genetics. of the curse. Yes, yeah, right. It's not a part of the curse. No, it's it's not. not. It's not. And so to know that God made me with this pattern, yeah. there's an intention. And if I can tap into that and say, okay, Lord, you called me, you made me. I'm cut on the inside. My covenant that he's made with me is different. It's not better and it's not weaker than a man, but it's different. That's right. And to know that, then I can start to say, all right, Lord, I'm going to use this. And I, I'm so blessed because I think we've witnessed it working together with one another because we're like doing field ministry daily. Amen. Like it's so much. And we connect so much with women and people that we can be in a place where I'm like, I just touch, put my hand on someone. Yes. And the Lord just allows, it's a special anointing, allows it that I can just feel yes. exactly what that person is feeling. And, I, and as a kid, I didn't understand it. Because mm. I remember praying for someone as a teenager. Yes. And are you younger than a teenager. I just was like, oh my God, this person is so sad. Yes. And then now, as I've started to grow in my walk with the things of, with things of God, I can start to understand it more. And as I've leaned into that gifting, yes. I'm like, oh, I can see. Yes. The Lord will give me scripture. Yes. I can speak into their life because the That's Lord right. will give me vision like you. Yes. And so um, just managing, learning to manage my emotions and accept that has <laughs> really transformed my life. See, and your word was for me. Side note. <laughs> See what I mean? She is a prophetess. <laughs> She's already speaking it out, you know. And, and that's what, you know, God does. He, I, love, I love the Holy Spirit because, you know, he'll give me a vision or he'll speak to me and say, she's a prophet she's a pastor she's a teacher you know whatever it is you know god will show the prophet to raise them up because you have to know who you are like i remember when when they kept on telling me you're a prophetess i'm like huh i didn't want to be i didn't want to be i didn't want to have that title i'm like no 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 because you know i knew that there was a lot you know of a, a lot of that was uh, you know accountability you know that i was going to have to handle you know whatever words that came out of my mouth you know i mean they're going to someone and and i would say well i'm just a servant of god i'm a woman of god and then i had so many prophets come to me like after you know and they would say you are a prophetess don't you know that you, the reason why you need to know who you are and i would say why <laughs> and they were like because that's who you are god made you to be a prophet to the nations he's called you and whatever it is you just have to know that you know that you know the truth mm -hmm. and i was like oh my gosh and then after that like after so many prophets came to me and gave me that word okay i'm a prophetess now you know but then you know and god he's raised he's even raised me up even more to where you know he's called me an apostle you know, and I'm not calling myself that. I'm like, everyone else is calling me an apostle. But see, that's the thing. He gives us confirmation. You know, it's not, you know, we can, we can think that maybe, but God will always have one or five or ten other prophets or apostles come in and say, you know what? God's raising you up to be an apostle, and this is the reason why. And so you have to, like, receive it. And that's the problem. Sometimes we don't receive. We don't know how to receive. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the first thing. You know, and I know for me, because I'm a giver, it was so hard for me to receive. And when I was like on my, you know, like on, on just like, I want to say in my, in my bad way, my wicked ways, you know, I, I thought I was so good because, you know, I had this great job and I could, you know, give money out to people who needed it, you know, but really that was just my way of not looking at myself. Mm -hmm. See? I was, you know, even though I, you know, I, I love to give and, you know, and I, I wanted to give. It had that, you know, and the principle is when you give money, when you sow money, it does come back to you. It really does. And, and, and I really believe that that's the reason why God has always kept me because even though I wasn't serving him my whole life, but it was just that principle that no matter what, whatever you sow a seed, your words, your time, God gives it back to you. So I want to encourage you that, that whoever is out there that, that needs to, to give, you know, either a seed or your, your money or your time or words, whatever, it will come back to you. And God wants to multiply it. See, that's the thing. People think, well, if I give a tenth of, of, of my monies, then, you know, like that's, that's like 10% that I'm losing. 
but they don't realize that really God is going to multiply it double. Mm -hmm. You know, and it, it doesn't necessarily mean that he's going to multiply monies. It could be blessings, you know, different types of blessings. Maybe your children need to be saved. Maybe, you know, there's a coworker that needs to be, you know, healed or something, you know. And so these are blessings that God will come back and give to us. But anyway, back on the subject about emotions. So God made us with to have, to feel, okay? And the thing is, is that men are different than women. We are so different than men. And we have to understand that, like you said, you understand that you are different. How I talk to you, I might not be able to talk to a man the same way because I'm not going to get the same results back. You and I will have probably the same feelings because we're women. But for a man... You know, men, God just didn't make men like that. Men want respect. Men want to be encouraged. Men want to know, like, hey, you know, I'm doing, you know, like, you're doing a great job, baby, you know, or, or you know, um, like, I appreciate you, you know, and, or, you know, maybe they have a vision, and, and, and God puts you in their way to be a helpmate, to help them, to encourage them, to bless them. And, you know, and that's the thing. I think that there are so many women who are so negative with men because they're treating them like a woman. You know, like, like if you say, um, well, isn't it your job to do this? And, and really it could be either or person's job to do it. You know, like if for me, the trash. If I see the trash needs to be taken out, I'm not going to wait for my husband to take out the trash. If I see that it needs to be taken out, I'm going to take it out, right? But, but men just want to be, remember, Men are supposed to be the source, meaning they are the provider. They have a lot of pressure on them as men. You know, first of all, they were born into malehood, okay? And, and so they already have, you know, and, and if they're not raised in a family with a mother and father, and they're only raised with a the mother, they're, they, they're not getting that support like how a woman would get from their mother. And so the mother will always try to, you know, she's not going to, she's not, she's not the father. So he can't get what he needs from his father. So men already have a negative thing going against them when they're not being raised in a family, meaning mother and father. So, you know, there's a lot of things that men have to fight through. And once we understand that the devil wants to kill them, just like how Hammond wanted to kill the babies, you know, it's the same thing still today. He wants to destroy the family. And who is, he, who is he going after? He's not going after the women. He's going after the men. Because they're supposed to be the head. See, the devil, he works in, in, in a crazy way sometimes. You know, that we, sometimes we don't even understand. But thank God for the Holy Spirit who teaches us, who educates us, and, and so that we can know who we are in him. And you being a prophetess, you know, knowing that you are this prophet who God is raising up. And for your, you know, your generation, you're going to speak words, words and words and words into women. And you're going to raise them up. You're going to disciple them. That's your job. Men. So, and I feel like you're like, have this like a teacher anointing on you, you know, and, um, and, and so God is going to use you, and, and, and also, too, in the most amazing way, you know, of, of, of also being in the women's ministry of teaching women, you know, like the Word of God, you know. And it's just something that you have to believe. You know, you have to have faith, you know. And, and I, I feel like God is saying that to you right now, like because of your faith and, and because you had an experience with the Holy Spirit that, that he's going to move mightily in you. Like I see this fire like inside of you and it's like coming out of your mouth. Like it's lighting up the people. You know how you do the, the, the light thing? You know, you're trying to click it, you know, and it finally lights. That's what I see. Like God, I see your, 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 the fire inside of you and he's like opening up your mouth and then it's like, and it's like going to all these women, like the fire of God is going to these women. <laughs> so, so anyway, um, I, what, what do you feel like God is, is saying to women in your generation right now? Um, sorry, I'm getting over a cold. So it's okay. If my voice cracks, I apologize. Right. But I think like 
Rachel and like she said, we work together all the time. And so we have kind of these conversations going on continually. And just, I think what the Lord has dealt with me in my, in my life and in my walk, you know, has been like, we don't have to be in like a relationship to be complete or to do anything. Amen. And that was something that I struggled with mm. because um, I'm separated. And so I was married, okay. separated. And the Lord started calling me to things. And I was like, well, how when you know, when the Lord does restore this, how is that going to, how does that going to play in, you know, how mm. will he come into this? And I remember talking to one of the pastors at my church and she was just like, but the Lord has given you a calling and you yeah. have to walk out in that. Yeah. And, and he knows how he's going to bring that in. But, and she even shared her testimony of when she felt the Lord calling her to do something. Yes. And she spoke with her, her husband and he was like, well, I don't know. And, but she knew the Lord had called her. She's like, well, the Lord has called me and I'm, and I'm going to step out. And he was like, okay, go for it. Yes. Amen. You know, and I know that the Lord has shown us that even for you know first of all relationship with uh with a man is it the only objective we have in that's this right life. you know we we are able to walk out in these callings yes. and and move in the spirit and like, yes. you know i think that's your mom had highlighted that verse you know that the holy spirit will fall on all flesh on men and women that's right you know and it's been one of um one of the verses i've been holding on to because I have had a, um, not a struggle, but I have had to wrestle to really believe that the Lord has given me the Holy Spirit. Because mm -hmm. sometimes it, he, he moves differently in me sometimes than how he moves in Rachel. Of course. And having to understand that has been a little bit different, but the Lord has been showing me, like, I've called you, and you are complete in me. Mm -hmm. you Amen. Know, you are complete in me, and, and the spouse I have for you will be a compliment it doesn't have to be someone who completes you and i think we have that distorted view um you know we have these fairy tales growing up and yes. like, i love disney growing up and i yes. watch it and all that yes. but you grow up with this story of this man's going to come and he's going to save yes. you and then your life all of a sudden makes sense your life all of a sudden begins and the lord's like no like you have a calling and you have purpose out before that like you are a person before that person comes into your Amen. life yes and so for me, I, I think he's just saying like, we have to, like you said, have faith in what he's calling us to be yes. and receiving him. That's one of the main things he's been dealing with me in my heart is receive who I've who I've already said you are and walk in yes. it. And as you walk in it, I think you said in another room um, when we were talking, <laughs> you step out, you take a, a step of faith yes. and he takes more steps yes. for you. Yes, amen. You know, and that's a new season that he's been leading me to. Yes. Is I've been so used to well, Lord, show me. And once he's shown me, then I move. And it's been a new season of, you know, I told you, and now you step in it, and then I will move. And I think that is what he's um, leading a lot of us women is yeah. step out in who I'm telling you to. Yes, amen. Step out in who I'm calling you to be and cling to me. Amen. Cling to me, and I will show you and, and the healing that needs to occur within our hearts in order to be able to walk into, you know, our callings and who we are destined to be allowing the Holy Spirit to reveal, and I think you were talking about, um, I'm trying to remember exactly what it was, but it, it reminded me of, <coughs> excuse me, that self, a self-reflection that we need to have, mm -hmm. a willingness to be self-reflective of the things that are in our hearts and the things that we've been battling with, Yes. and, you know, bringing them to the Lord and saying, God, okay, this is something I'm struggling with, Yes. or this is an insecurity that I have, or you know, whatever it may be, yes. acknowledging that, yes, this is something that I that, that is in me, but here it is, Lord, and I'm inviting you into the midst of that so that you can work with it, you can deliver me from it, and we can, you know, break that, that bondage, break that whatever it yes. is, especially if it's generational, but in any case, you know, to be able to then fully walk in what the Lord That's has right. called you to and how a lot of the thing, those things come full circle. Yes. A lot of the things that you struggle with, a lot of the things that, you know, whoever you are personally, whatever you deal with, the Lord will then not only liberate you from it, but he will use you to speak to others who are dealing with that kind and of stuff. And that's exactly what you're doing right now. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. You see, the thing is, is that, you know, as, as women of God, you know, I, I believe that, you know, the prince's story, you know, is, is not always true. It's, it's, it's make-believe. You know, and, and the devil can sometimes put his hand on that. 
you know, and, and, you know, we can think, oh, here comes our Prince Charming, you know, and he may look everything like, like, wow, he's got it going on, you know, but then once you, you know, finally say, I do, he is not the man of God. Like, he yells at you. He, you know, will not love you. And, you know, he goes out at night and he comes home drunk. And, you know, what happened to the Prince Charming? That is not Prince Charming anymore. That, that, is, that is the devil. You know, so women, you have to wait on God. This is a time of waiting. And God is calling up women right now. He's exhilarating them. He's telling them that they have a purpose that they have a goal and to write it down because we are a women of purpose. We are, you know, we, we are like Ruth. You know, we are like Deborah. You know, I, I love Ruth because, you know, we were talking about this last night that Ruth had a purpose in her life for a couple things. Not, not only was it, you know, to, to reach or to get a Boaz, but it was to help her mother-in-law, Noemi. You know, she said... She was a Moabite woman, and, and, you know, she was a pagan woman who, pay, who um, prayed to idols, okay? But when, when it was that time for, for her to leave, Naomi wanted her to leave and go back to her home. She said, no. She goes, your people will be my people. Your God will be my God, right? And so when she said that, then Naomi said, okay. And so then she's like, you know, I'm going to do whatever I have to do to to support us and so she's like if i have to go work then i'm gonna go work and so she went out with a purpose to go work it had nothing to do with trying to find a man of god it was just i'm gonna go work and that's the problem with us women we're not working we're not working we're like sitting on the couch you know oh yeah you know we're on our phones hey hi but you're not, you know, you're not working. You're not doing anything that God has called you. You're not even reading your Bible. You're just sitting. You know, and I, I, you know, I just want to encourage you that that's not God's way. God's way, if you read Ruth, you'll get it. You might have to read it five times, but you will get it. Yeah. Because we are Ruths out there. There's a lot of Ruths out there that need to come out. You know, and, and for me and, and for you, you know, because you're married... You know, so you already have your Boaz, and, 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 and God's going to bring restoration and reconciliation in that. So, you know, it's already done in Jesus' name. But, but for us women who are still single, you know, I'm, I'm about purity. I'm about love, you know, and, and, and I just want to be the witness that, yes, I am an older woman, and I, yes, I have been married, and yes, you know, I mean, I, I experienced all the marriage thing with sex and all that kind of stuff, okay? So let me tell you, I think it's harder for a married woman who was already married to all of a sudden just stop. Like, stop having sex. Like, that's really hard. Because God, God created man and women to come together to be in one flesh. See? So, you know, I think that, that now I'm on this, the right path with God that... Because I'm in his word, because I know who my father is, because I know who I am in him, that, that he is my, my husband, that I am his bride. And we all need to start acting like brides of Christ, not as prostitutes, you know, as, as these ungodly women. You know, we need to, to walk in holiness and righteousness. And righteousness is just to be right with God. That's it. Because when you do that, before you know it, then God's going to come around and bring you that right man of God. But I want to encourage you to wait. Just wait. You know, read in the Word. You know, get in the Word of God. You know, let Him fulfill you. You know, let Him tell you, okay, it's time for you to take that step now. And get out there. And if that means just to be serving in your church, that's all you need to do is just serve in your church until the Holy Spirit moves you into ministry. And God wants to clean you out. He wants to wash you. He wants to do the most amazing thing within you. I want you to share with the women, how do you do it? <laughs> they want to know, well, how do I do that? Well, you know, I, talk is cheap, so, you know. I'm, I am 37 years old. Okay. And I have been single my whole life. Okay. Uh, I had a 
a relationship when I was in my 20s, but okay. I'm single and I've loved the Lord my whole life. Yeah. And so it's very Men of God, single woman, oh, no. <laughs> beautiful woman of God here, um, prophetess, okay? Um, Everything that you need right here. She's I, a woman of God. I just, <laughs> <laughs> That's what we do, you yeah. know? <laughs> um, I'm embarrassed now, but... Um, <laughs> Um, what's funny though is that I, I don't say that boastfully. I think just in my twenties it was really hard um, because life hits you. Yes. And when life hits you, like when my dad was really ill and he had two liver transplants and mm. he's be- he's good now. Amen. Um, but it was one of the most trying times in my life. But I had a father, Amen. and so I knew what it felt like to be loved and to be treated yes. well by a man. Yes. You know, just in that basic yes. foundation yes, yes. and honestly the man that i was with as a young adult he was a man of god as well so there was wow. a, a was a respect factor wow. there so going into the world at in my mid-20s single all of a sudden again well i wasn't married but you know yes. not in a relationship i did have a really hard time i did have a really hard time because i wanted to do things for god i wanted to to um, live my life happy and fulfilled. Yes, amen. But it felt like everything around me was telling me the opposite. Mm-hmm. Everything around me was I had to be connected with someone. And unfortunately, even in the church, yeah. mm-hmm. even in the church, and this is not a criticism of the church, because I'm faithful to my church. Yes. I love my church. The yes. church is the bride of Christ. I'm yes. with it. Yes. You know, and I know that. But the church sometimes does things wrong. That's right. And, you know, I often felt like, there was something missing because I wasn't connected to someone. Mm. Like I had to wait. Yes. Like I had to, I don't know why I'm getting okay. emotional. <laughs> okay. But I felt like I had to wait to even do anything for God because I didn't have a man by my side. Oh. I felt like I, I couldn't, I, like going to a restaurant by myself was embarrassing. Yes. Or doing, like I was pathetic to have a bunch of women friends. And, or, or like to yeah. just have the And time. that's the enemy. Yes, that's the enemy it is. Telling you it lies. is. And it's the enemy, and it's yes. also the enemy infiltrated into sometimes yes. our, our, our mindset, yes. our traditions yes. that aren't really biblically based. Right. Some of them are, but some of them aren't. Right. And I started to that. So how I do it is the, as the question. How I do it was really to say, God, I want you more than anything. Oh. Yes, hallelujah. And I don't know how to do that because sometimes my flesh doesn't want him more than anything. Yes. Know. Do you know what I mean? Yes. It's not easy. No, it's, not. it's not easy. And I'm just like, Lord, I don't know, but I don't want any ugliness inside of me. Amen. So whatever that takes to get out, I just want to I want to I want to be close to you because he gave me one experience to know and the funny thing is it was a, it was years ago some a stranger. I was at Angela's Temple over in um in LA. I was going to church there. A strange saw me praying. I was in the back row of that huge, massive church. Yes. And I was praying. I wasn't in sin or anything crazy. Yeah. But she came up to me, and she prayed for me. And she says, the Lord sees you like this in the palm of his hand. Wow. And he's, he's taking care of you. You're safe. And I said, oh, my gosh. Okay. And to know that I was enough as a woman of God. I was enough. It made me stop chasing because when you're out in your 20s or 30s or 40s, because it doesn't go away just because no, you no. get older. No, it doesn't. It just, it just when you don't fix it, yeah. it just ingrates the cut and the infection gets deeper. Oh, yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yep. And yeah. so we learn how to cover it up more. Yep. So that means the walls are harder. That means the hardness in our heart is harder. We become more callous. Yep. I've seen it because you get a 20-year-old who's struggling with stuff that happened in their teens is one thing. Yep. But when you get a 50-year-old, yep. sometimes who come to our women's oh, brunches, yeah. And they're 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 battling something that happened in their t- their yep. fi- their teens. Yep. It's had layers of buildup oh, and yeah. hurt and stuff like of that. Of course. And so for me, I just was like, God, I want you more than anything. I want you more than anything, and I just want to be right with you. Show me. I don't want to just go because everybody else. I I don't like to be fake. Yes, amen. I don't like to be fake. So, so learning to just let God in all of my crevices. That's like, I know it sounds weird, but like even this little crevice here, yeah. and this little, like whatever I, I say, God, I, got a lot. I feel lonely, God, <laughs> I feel sad. I, I want to do your will. How come I'm alone like this? And not being afraid to pray about those things. Yes. God, sometimes I want to have somebody holding me. 
Amen. You know, and talking to God about those things, you know, like, yeah. but then the other prayer is like, also, God, I want to, I want to be powerful. Yes. I want, I want to, I want to see lives changed. Amen. I want that too. Amen. I want to walk in the fullness of my calling. Amen. I want to see women and men and young people. Amen. I want to see violence end. Yes. Yes. I want to see drug addiction broken. Amen. I want to see people being healed from Amen. from from the from whatever it is physical yes. things from rape yes you know these things i yeah. want them to be i want to see deliverance i want to see hope yes Amen. and said and i think the biggest thing is me just saying okay god take hey, i'll do it yes and it's like you know again that you take one step he's going to meet right. you back and Amen. you're like oh and yeah. i think the practicals of it are are just really hanging on his every word yes you know and not when i when i when you want to be lonely and you want to go places that you know are gonna like constantly put you in a mental place that you're not supposed to be like maybe you don't need to netflix binge on like yeah. romantic comedies or yeah you know you know even in the i think one of my our pastor says um repent while you're sinning while you're sinning repent sounds wrong but if you repent while you're sinning it starts to make the it starts to make the the bounce back time shorter yeah, right you know when you're yes. struggling with something yes you know and i just i think for me it's, it's some of that it's some of just like you know every day making sure he's what i need and what i want and you know and that's the thing is that when you finally realize who he is yeah and that you have been chosen to be his daughter or to be his son, then you can say, okay, you know what? We have to die to our flesh. And people say, well, what do you mean by die, your, by to, your, die to your flesh? It's meaning like you're just getting out of all that stuff that's on you. Like you can just leave it and just like you can just see your spirit just get out and walk, mm -hmm. you know. And, and it's just dying to your flesh, meaning like you don't have to do the things of the world. You don't have to do those lustful things. You don't have to go watch X-rated movies yeah. or even R-rated movies. Or, you know, you don't have to go to the bar and have five shots of tequila. You know, or you don't have to hang out with men just to make you feel good. Right. You know, I feel good now. This is, like, the best I've ever been. Like, I am, like, so happy. Like, yeah. I am so blessed. Like, there's nothing, like, there's no, nothing that anyone could say to me that could even hurt me. Because mm -hmm. I know who I am. I know who my father is. Yeah. I, I'm carrying his blessing. You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, you know, carry it out. And I'm going to help women and even men to put, to get them to their destiny. You know, because that's the Holy Spirit in me. That's the fire of God in me. Yeah, I you think know? that what's interesting is like when you start to realize where you feel the best, it's interesting. Like I, I'm currently in a place where I'm like, I've never felt this Amen. happy. Yes. And then like, I think one of the things when I stopped drinking, cause I was never like an alcoholic yeah, or anything. Right. I wasn't like getting wasted, Yeah. but I would be like, Oh, I'll drink. But I started to fall so in love with being filled with the presence of God, oh, the yes. spirit of come God. Come on, come on. That I was like, oh, I don't want to any, if if drinking a beer or an or any, uh, some tequila, like you said, yes, right? Yeah, yeah. If any of that stuff hinders me from being filled with the spirit, oh, I don't want that. If going on this date with this dude, I've been, I've been on like a million one dates, just so you know. <laughs> it is so bad. <laughs> So I have so many stories, but in case any of them ever see this, I would never repeat them. <laughs> Just know that there were teeth, like big teeth. There were, <laughs> oh, no. there was a guy who made me hide chicken in my bag. Um, okay. One guy brought his mom to the, to the date. <laughs> I'm not lying. This is funny. I mean, this is like, we're like, what? but. Wait, this why is was real I, life. Like, oh. yeah. And so, <laughs> but I, what I realized is if going on these dates were causing me to go into an unhealthy place, mm. I said, I'd rather spend my time with doing God's work because I truly believe, and this is something I said at the brunch last time, that the Lord gave me the peace because we're doing a How to Catch a Man series. Yes. Okay. It's, it's fire. It's okay. Just letting you know. Yes, yes, um, yes. But when we're running, 
and we're doing what God's called us to do, my, my faith in God is that I'm going to look over. And rather than holding myself back for the guy that don't, that who, who, like Pastor John Gray says, he can't even hold your anointing in a paper bag. <laughs> like you trying to be with somebody who can't even hold your anointing oh in a paper God. bag. He doesn't even, he don't even pray. And I'm over here waiting, worried about him. Yes. You know, and like instead of doing that to quiet and dumb myself down into a little box of what some random dude might want and need, yeah. I'm going to walk in the fullness of what God's called me to do. And my faith is I walk into my fullness, I'm going to be like, hey, what's up? And he's going to be right here walking right next to me and we're going to be ready to go. And, that and, and I, I stand on that because God says he has plans for me that are greater than I have for exactly. myself. And if, if, if that promise that he has for me is not real, then none of it's real. And, and, that's, and I, I can't. That, I know this God's is real talk good. because, see, th- this is the thing that women, you know, we're so desperate to have a man that all of a sudden we'll just take him. But that's the curse. And that is a curse. Because the, that is the original curse. That's right. He said that, that when, when God said that, then we, we walk without the redemption of Christ when we go back to that and we allow ourselves because he said your desire will be for your husband. Yeah. And it sounds like, oh, that'll be a good thing. But he mentions it as a part of the curse. We're, if we're constantly wanting after this man, that's not walking in the fullness no, because, because God has called us to walk and in desire his, after him. That's right. In his fullness. And the other stuff will come. And right. Amen. Do you know what I mean? And I think, and, and even like when we talk about a Proverbs 31 woman, which was one of the series we did before, it's dangerous because we as women want to get this checklist so we can get a man. And dude, like this scripture was written for men on what you should look for in a woman. We should, I mean, we could read it, but if we're reading it on a way to how to get a man, we're getting it all backwards. No. Because that's not, like our desire, it should be for Christ. Amen. And as we become more like Christ, then we become more attractive. Yes. I mean, and, and, I'm, and I'm a firm believer, if you're out there, I'm going to say this. Yes, amen. If you're out there and you're saying like, well, I don't know. Like, I feel like I just turned them away. Chances are, or you scared them away because they're saying you're too intimidating, you're too churchy, your your standards are too high, all that stuff. God's got a bubble around you. It's cool, chill, because you don't want all the the riff raff who's trying to get it. And exactly. if they're coming at you crazy, then you don't need that either. Amen. Because even with all of this awesomeness, and I'm exactly. sure you, all of this awesomeness, <laughs> people try to come at us crazy. Yep. And the reality is that's not. Those people we don't want. And the ones who get scared off because you go to church too much, you don't want them either. So Sorry. I, I want to say, no, 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 that's good. Because, <laughs> because you know, they're, they're, you know I, I really Girl haven't dated. Now. I haven't really dated. Okay, so I was just kind of seeing this, this, this man. I'm not even going to go into all that. But, but what he said, what he said, he said, you're too on fire for God. You know, like you're an inferno. And, and he goes, you need like a prophet by your side. And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, I guess if I'm too on fire for God, I'm like, hallelujah. Because God wants us to be on fire for him. Yeah. He doesn't want us to be lukewarm. You know, so I'd rather be on fire for God and know that I have a destiny, that I am going somewhere. And uh, so I'm like, well, see you later, buddy. You know, God bless you. I'm praying for you. You know, may you, may you get the fire of God inside of you. But you know what? We don't have to wait for for anyone because when God has called you, He's called you. Now it's it's on you. It's your will to be in His will, okay? Because God is not going to go and say, "Well, come on now, you got to do it." <laughs> no, God is like, "I'm I'm going to give you an opportunity. Would you like to do this?" And you're like, "Yes, Lord, I'm going to do it. I want to follow you. I want to. I just want to cling to you, whatever it is." And when you're in that mist, when you're in that moment of time. And you're not even thinking about a man of God. That's when he brings you the man of God. Because you know what? You're whole. You're not broken. You're whole. All the baggage, all the old stuff that you had is gone now. God wants you to be single. Just like when he created Adam and Eve. He first created Adam. He was made single. He was made whole. He was to to take dominion. Then he said, it's not good for man should be alone. So then he pulled the woman out of the man. And made her whole and single. Okay? And then he said, now you're going to take dominion too. And you're going to be the helpmate to his vision. See, so many of us women of God are running around 
First of all, if we are married, okay, we have two different divisions or two different visions. So what does that cause? It causes division, division, right? That's not God's way. So we have to submit to one another. Women, submit to your husbands. I don't care if you're a CEO, CFO, president, whatever. You have to be submissive. That's what the word of God says, to meet, to be submissive under your husband. That doesn't mean that you're just going to get pushed around and all that. No. That means, you know, you guys come to an agreement on situations, and he will make the final decision. He well, will be the prayer. I will say that's one of the reasons why I can't play around out here. Like, I, I had a, like, I mean, with a guy that doesn't understand. That's right. I mean, I maybe I'm crazy feminist type vibe. I don't know. But I'm like... I will submit. It took me a while. When I get a man of God, I want to be able to submit. Amen. But I'm not going to submit to someone. The hard thing is I don't want to have to submit to someone if I put myself in a covenant with. Then who doesn't hear from God? Because That's my right. submission to a man is not because I'm beneath him, but because I ultimately trust in them. That's and right. that God put me in that relationship. That's why we need right? to be married to men of God. Yeah. That's the reason why. Because then your submission is now to a human person who's not connecting to the I mean, Father. In my marriage, I was the head, and I mm. hated it. Mm. I didn't want to be the head. I wanted my husband to be the head, but he, 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 we weren't serving God. Even mm. still, though, even though we weren't serving God, you know, I still wanted him to make the final decisions, you know, but he, he put me in a situation where I had to do it. I was the one that had to do everything, and I did not like it. So that's why I'm like, you know what? God's already groomed me for when that man of God does come into my life, that I'll go right under him. But, it's, but he will be a man of God, first yeah. of all. Yeah. So let's just share with you. We, we have about eight more minutes left. So being in your situation right now, I, I, if, if you can share, how are you handling this situation? Are you, are you like, praying and fasting for your husband are you are you still encouraging him are you what what is it if you don't mind you know to share because there's women out there that could be in the same situation as you and you know they could be like i'm done with this i'm out of here you know but i don't think that's in your case i think that you're still holding on (laughs) so Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's been a journey. I mean, I've been separated for it's going on to six years, and we haven't really had communication wow. for probably a year after we split up. And um, there were there was a season where I was done, and I cried out to God. And and what the beauty of it is, um, to kind of backtrack a little bit, was God kept me in His hand. Amen. And and I recognized it was by the grace of grace of God that I didn't go as far away as I could have yes. because I've seen other people who have gone through separations you know even in my in my in my own close circle of people that I know who have gone way far off and I you know I I don't know if it was with you or, or somebody else that I remember telling them like I don't know why God didn't let me and I mean thank you you know but I, it could have easily been me you know I, I yes, I, I had my moments of I don't want to go home and, and I would go out with coworkers and maybe we would go to happy hour, but I never was like super drunk like that. I, yeah. I, I was always like a social drink. I'd have like one drink yeah. and it was like hard cider and I never finished it because it <laughs> bloated me. But even kind of quickly going back to that, I was like the Lord showed me like you can't be drunk and full of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, and I remember true. that just convicted me and I was like, okay, that's yeah. no longer. You Amen. Know? Amen. But, um, it, it, you know, be, I cried out to God and I said I, I'm done I don't I, I don't want to hold on to this anymore Amen. why why should I have to hold on you know it, and I remember we were doing a small group series at my at my church and it was called um, seven steps to answered prayers and so th- some of the steps you know what what do you even want do you even know what you're asking God for yeah. and then once you find out what does the word have to say about it and then comparing what you what you want and what the word says 
And if it's in alignment, then you continue to ask for that. But if it's not, then align yourself to what the word says. And so I remember bringing that before the Lord and saying, you know what, God, I want a divorce. And I remember asking him, like, show me your heart for marriage. Show me what your heart is for marriage, what you have to say about divorce. And show me your heart. Like, show me your heart. I didn't want to fall back on what I kept hearing from other people. I didn't want to hear other people's interpretation of it, not because... I was too prideful. I just didn't want it clouded by anybody's experience. Amen. Because I realized, and one of the first things I told the Lord was, whether it's to hold on or whether it's to let go, I just want to do your will in this. Amen. You know, and so I remember he just started taking me to, and it was a season of, there were more moments where I would just cry myself to sleep. Yes. And and I would, I would just cry out to God. I, and that was the season where I really learned what that meant. Amen. It wasn't just like, oh, God. Like, it was screaming and crying, like ugly crying. Yes, yes. And, you know, but it was all laid out before him. And I said, yes. God, this is how I feel. Yes. And I remember he showed me that his heart for marriage was to be forever. Yes. And, it, yes, it doesn't talk about the exceptions of whether there's abuse or all those other, you know, complications. Yes. But at the end of it, he was like, he told the, the, the Pharisees came and asked him. They tried to trick him and yes. said, what do, you know, well, what do you have to say about this? And he said, well, what, is, what did Moses say? And they, and they said, well, if there's adultery, then, yes. then th- there's divorce. And Jesus said, yeah, but that's only because you hardened your heart. And he said, from the beginning, it wasn't so. And I remember the Lord was just like, my heart is not for there to be a separation. And it came to a crossroads where the Lord said, if you want the divorce, I'll give it to you. But that's not what I want for you. And, and um, I said, okay, Lord, I want what you want. And I recognize my family may not always be in agreement with it. Yeah. And, and it's, it's been a journey for my family because Amen. I know they love me. Yeah. And, you know, they don't want me seeing, they don't want to see me hurting. But even my mom has been like, I don't always understand it. But I, I know that if you're following the Lord, then you're in good hands. Amen. And so I am. Um, I'm trying to remember your question. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just been, you know, really seeking the Lord. And, and, okay. and yes, I do pray for him. And, Good. and I say, Lord, you know, and as I have been, the Lord has softened my heart towards him. He's yes. restored a love for him that I didn't necessarily always have in this journey. Amen. And he's given me visions of who he sees him to be. And even, you know, I had to take a step back and be willing to de-villainize the man that I once villainized and said, you know, this is still a man the Lord loves. Yes. And just because he's not, you know, responding the way I think he should, that doesn't mean he doesn't love God. And that doesn't mean that, you know, he doesn't hear from God. Yes. Because in my own walk with the Lord of seeking him, I was still, you know, caught up in things that I shouldn't be, that yes. he has delivered me from. Yes, the Lord, amen. But he's like, you weren't perfect the whole time. Yes. And so extend the grace you have received. That's right. And so I do pray, and I and I do believe the Lord has given me a word of restoration. Yes. And, and, um, I have friends who pray for um, for that, but for now, it's it's standing on what the word says. And even when my feelings and my the facts that are around me say otherwise, I hold on to what the word says and make that Amen. more true than what I. And, and I think that you know one of the biggest things is that you know as women of God, you know when when you're going through a struggle, you know or situation like that, that. We as women of God shouldn't be, first of all, telling you, well, you should be getting a divorce. You know, you should leave your husband. You know, you should, you know, you know, try to take everything away from him. You know, you should do this. You should do that. That is not God's way. God's way is for us. Hey, sister, you know what? Let's pray for him. Let's pray for you. You know, 